Living in a multi-dog household certainly comes with its own unique set of challenges. And while I love that our dogs get along and enjoy playing, I certainly don't want my house to be chaos all the time. And while we might have lots of opportunities for dogs to engage with play and get some good exercise and enrichment in together, sometimes training together as a group can be hard for many of my clients, especially if there's an issue with resources with the dogs. I'm Chelsea with Positive Futures Dog Training and Behavior, and I share my house with three Alaskan Malamutes. I'm no stranger to living in a multi-dog household and some of those challenges that can arise. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you five easy training exercises that you can do and incorporate all your dogs together. We're gonna to talk about some ways that you can set up the sessions with management to make sure that even if there are challenges with resources, we're keeping our dogs safe. When working with two dogs at once, a little bit of management is gonna help ensure that your training session goes successful. This is one setup that you can do when working on a group training session of relaxation. With one dog in an X pen and one dog out with you, you can reward both of them for finding their beds. When this behavior is brand new for them, I will accept anything from standing on the bed, sitting on the bed, or laying down. As the dog becomes more advanced, we want to start shaping more of a down behavior than a stand or a sit. You can use a food lure if necessary to guide the dog's nose from a seated position into a down. At this point in the training, I'm not using any cues if the dog doesn't know them. I'm just reinforcing this concept of relaxation in close proximity. If you find that the dog that's out with you is still trying to interact with the dog in the X pen, you can put the dog who is outside of the X pen on a leash and collar to help keep them closer to you and more engaged in the training instead of the other dog. If at any point the dog gets up off the bed, just use a food lure to guide the dog back down onto the bed. The first step of criteria that I'm working towards is maintaining a down position while quiet. Once you achieve this with both dogs, then you can start to add in a little distraction or motion. You can start by just shifting your weight backwards, taking half a step or a full step away from the bed. You wanna make sure that you're working at the pace of the lowest level dog. So if one of the dogs gets up off the bed during the training session, that would indicate that this was too challenging for them and you'll want to take a step back to make it a little easier so both dogs can be successful. In addition to working on relaxation as a group, you can also work on building a positive interrupter. Positive interrupters will help you get the dogs away from one another if needed around a moment of tension or before play becomes too rough. What you're going to do is make whatever noise you want as your positive interrupter. A funny noise like bup, 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 brrr, or even a word like that's enough. And immediately after saying the word, you're going to feed the dogs. This will start to build the assumption that this word means food is coming, which is a great way to get the dogs to stop what they're doing and reorient back towards you. Simply make your noise or give your cue and then immediately feed each dog. In multi-dog households, it's also helpful to have a generic attention grabber. So instead of working on the name game with each dog, I want one cue that can get both dogs' attention. You can build this while they're together by giving your cue, making secondary noises to grab attention, and when you have eyeballs from both dogs on you, go ahead and mark and drop your treat down to them. It's important that you grab attention from both dogs during this activity if you're gonna work on this activity together. If you find that one of the dogs is not catching on quite as quick, try to plan a single session with just that dog before bringing them back together to practice. You can also use your X-Pen setup to start to work on a group recall training session. To do this, I place one cookie in each hand, bend down, call the dog to me and pay them, and use that second treat to toss behind the dogs to get them to move away from me again. Whatever word you're using, make sure that you're consistent with it. If you've taught a hand target, you can certainly reward them when they touch your hand, or you can build a different cue if you wanna keep your hand target nice and clean by working on a generic come or come here to get the dogs to come towards you. This is a nice way to get the dogs moving around each other and teach them that even though they're both present with one another, which is exciting and fun, they can still come when called. 
In addition to working with an X pen as your form of management, you can also use a tether. Take a carabiner attached to the handle and clip it around something sturdy to anchor one of your dogs. I always recommend when using a leash tether that you attach it to a body harness for safety and we're never far away from that dog. Take that leash tether and attach one of your dogs to something stationary with their bed nearby. Then take your other dog on leash out with you at a little bit of a distance. The ideal training setup would be that with the dog on leash with you, you're just out of reach of the dog on tether. This way it gives you the ability to reinforce them, but you don't have to worry about interrupting play or any shenanigans that might ensue. With one of the dogs on the tether, I go inside to grab the other on leash, reward as we approach and pass to keep her distracted, and then we sit down and work a little bit on relaxation. This is very similar to the activity indoors, but instead of the X-Pen, both dogs are now on leash, one of which is anchored a little further behind us to prevent them from interacting with each other via play or anything inappropriate. I occasionally will reinforce both dogs for maintaining contact with their bed. Again, in the early stages of this activity, I will accept standing or sitting, but eventually we want to help them lay down. So if you can, take a food lure and guide them from their nose down to the ground to get them into a down position. This is a really nice way to end a short play session or sniff session to help lower that arousal of both dogs. As you're working on these activities, if you notice that one of your dogs is struggling a little more, don't be afraid to take them out and do a little one-on-one -on -one time. It's also a great idea to do a quick one-on-one -on -one warm up before you head into that distracting group environment. As the dogs do well around one another, you can begin to reduce the management in your training session. And once they learn a little bit of patience and learn that watching another dog work is a good thing, then the sky's the limit in terms of your multi-dog training sessions. But even if we have those successful multi-dog training sessions, it's still important to remember that you and your dogs need some one-on-one -on -one time. So make sure that you still head out for those one-on-one -on -one training sessions to improve your relationship, communication, and advance their skills. If you're living in a multi-dog household, you're probably dealing with a lot of excitability and maybe some arousal. So with that being said, I think you'll like this video here.